Hello, my beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleeden Maffei with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep, all while deepening in your connection with your beautiful team of angels who love you so. I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and an encourager of souls. And I love what I get to do in the world. If you're wondering what my job looks like, I facilitate classes. That's the majority of what I do. I teach a different class about every six weeks or so. And the classes are designed to give you beautiful community They're typically intimate, so you have an opportunity to be present, to be in conversation. They happen over Zoom, and I've taught everything from the power of your voice to angel messenger training. Right now, I'm teaching a class in how to create your own oracle deck. I'm co-facilitating that class with my friend Andrea Shear, and perhaps by the time you listen to this there will be a new class that I'm offering. So I invite you to come over to my website, illuminatingsouls.com, where you can sign up for my mailing list. And this way, you'll always be in the know of what I have in the pipeline. I also do offer one-on-one angel sessions, and then also a long-form mentoring program, soul mentoring And this is perfect for those of you that are seeking ongoing encouragement and support and an opportunity to come together in sacred space in support of your journey. So there's lots of ways we can connect. And I also post regularly on my Facebook page. But for now, the angels and I are here to help you come into a sweet space where you can rest and replenish, where we can keep you company for the next hour or so, whether you are planning on drifting off to sleep or perhaps just going about your day and you're looking for good company and hopefully we will be good company for you. The way the podcast is designed is usually the first 15 or 20 minutes or so I introduce myself, this would be the welcome, the opening, and then I ramble a bit about whatever is on my heart, typically spiritual in nature, and I bring the angels in so you have a little bit of time in that angelic field, and actually the whole episode is filled with angelic energy, but in the first part I bring it into focus so you know that they're here, and then the next 40 minutes or so we go into story time. And I love story time. It can be anything from stories in my own life to reading some old publication in the public domain, flipping through the pages of an old community cookbook, or, as we're going to do in this episode, flipping through the pages of an old TV guide, because I'm a TV baby, (laughs) and I love reading through old TV guides and remembering where I was when these shows were on the air. So that's where we're going to be going in this episode. But for now, we're in the first part where I just make sure you know that there is love here for you. And so I invite you to take a deep breath in and just let go, let go of whatever came before this moment, whatever your it is, just Allow yourself to come present to the love that the angels are bringing to you. We all have angels, whether we are aware of it or not. It is a way that God and the universe infuse love upon our path. And as I was getting ready to record this episode, I got a little angelic nudge to pick a card for us from the Earth Angels Oracle deck. And in a little commercial here, I created this deck. It is a beautiful deck. And it is filled with lots of angelic love and beautiful art and messages. And 
I'll put a link in the show notes if you're interested in checking it out. So I love when the cards are obvious because the card that I pulled for us is the rest card. Just perfect for a sleep podcast, right? (laughs) Sure. And so this card says, take time to rest, replenish and restore. This is essential for your well-being. And I think rest has a lot of flavors. I think there's rest that is non-negotiable, you know, for people that are experiencing chronic illness. I have several loved ones who listen to this podcast who are chronically ill and rest is non-negotiable for them. And typically it's not restorative. It is just an essential part of the rhythm of life. I know that I've been going through a time of my life where I have needed much more rest than usual. And so I've been tired a lot more. And then there's the kind of rest that comes at the end of a long day, you know, where you might be tired and it's like, oh, thank goodness it's bedtime and I get to rest. So wherever you are on the continuum of your relationship with rest, please take this as a sign from the angels that you have permission to rest. In this world, Life can feel so busy, and there's always a compelling reason to engage. But it's it's equally as important to disengage, to have time off the grid, even off the planet, if you will, not to sound too metaphysical, but there's a phrase the angels often say, and it's that it's okay to lift your feet up off the earth for a while and rest. And that's a metaphor for a lot of things, but it includes giving your mind a break, not having to figure anything out, daydreaming, getting lost in a good show on Netflix. We're so used to being engaged in a world that never stops. You know, when I was growing up, there were expanses of time every day when the world paused or slowed down. You know, one of the things we're going to be doing today, as I shared with you already, we're going to look through TV guide. Well, when I was growing up, we had broadcast television. That was it. And you could only watch what was being broadcast at the time. And somewhere around one or two in the morning, the television stations went off the air for a few hours and they would play color bars. And typically the stations would come back on again somewhere around 5 or 6 a.m. with a religious program or the farm report or something like that. And also back in those days, we didn't have phones that went with us. So you could actually leave the house and no one could get in touch with you and it wasn't disastrous. People could actually function without being able to talk to another person right away. On Sundays, a lot of stores were closed. So I grew up in a time where there were pauses infused into life. You know, on holidays, Wes and I talk, my husband is named Wes, and and we talk about all the time how when we grew up on Thanksgiving, And Christmas, nothing was opened except perhaps a corner store. And so there was a quiet to the world that we don't really get to have anymore. I mean, sometimes if I'm up at 3 a.m., I can tune into the quiet. But that kind of quiet doesn't necessarily exist anymore in that requires a different different level of awareness of purposefully disengaging. You know, it used to come just baked into life. You disengage. It was Sunday. Everything was closed. 
and that doesn't really exist anymore. We live in a 24-7 international world where something is always happening, and there's always something to engage with. So I love that we got this rest card, and this very sweet encouragement to give our bodies and our consciousness time to unplug and rest. So I'm going to invite you to just take a deep breath in and just receive the light that is here for you. As I record this, it is early morning and there's a stillness in the air, just a little slight breeze that is rustling the leaves on our neighbor's trees. And I love getting still enough to notice the movement of the leaves. I've started a new morning habit, which might not sound drastic to any of you, but it is different for me, and it's that I'm getting up earlier in the morning, and before I do anything, before I shower, before I come to my desk, I make a cup of coffee, and, and I haven't had caffeine in years, but I have started having it again because it makes me feel better. And depending on if Wes is awake or out of bed yet, I come into the living room with my cup of coffee, and it's still dark outside, and we have blinds in our front room, and so the neighbors have their lights on at night, and so I'm going through this whole soliloquy to get to the point which is the leaves on the trees cast a shadow through the blinds when it's dark out, and I drink my coffee and I watch the shadows of the leaves dance on our living room wall and it's beautiful and it's poetic and it helps me come into stillness. I have this, I have this terrible addiction and addiction may be too strong a word. Um, I am terribly engaged with TikTok. I watch TikTok all the time. And there are these one minute or three minute videos and then you swipe up and there's another video. Now for somebody that watched a lot of TV, I love being engaged by video. It, it, it's, it's a love language for me. And the downside is it keeps my mind very, very active all the time. And I find myself getting engaged in things that I have no business being engaged in. I mean, I don't need to know all of these things and, and I don't need to hear other people's problems all the time. And, and so I'm just also in this wisdom from the angels with you because this message is for me too, to make more time to sit in the quiet and watch the subtle movement of the leaves on the trees or listen to the bird song and give ourselves permission to rest and be. But our consciousness needs time to wander. We need time to daydream and ramble through our thoughts and observe and find delight in the simple moments. And so I share this with you. And I know you cannot see what I see, but I am sharing the small movement of the leaves of the trees that I can see out my window with you. And for you to know that this world is filled with love for you. 
And the angels are here, but I'm going to call them in so that you know they are here as well. So if you are preparing for bed, I invite you to cozy on up and snuggle on in. And let's take some nice deep breaths in and out as we gently call ourselves forward into the heart of God. And beautiful angels on high, I invite you to join us here. I ask that you infuse this broadcast with waves of love and healing and inspiration and light. Helping each one of us connect with our gifts and abilities. Coming into a lightness of spirit. A sense of freedom to, to be a sense of freedom to come into our authentic hearts and the ability to shine brightly in this world, to be cleansed and cleared of anything that is not ours so that we can let go of other people's, to let go of other people's beliefs and perceptions that we need not take on and to come into a place of goodness and light. So I invite you to take another deep breath in, just receiving the love that is here for you. And if you have prayers and intentions that you wish to share with the angels and with God, I invite you to bring those into your heart now. And while you do so, the angels are bringing to each of us a beautiful column of golden light. This is cleansing and clearing light. Think of it as an energetic car wash of sorts for our light bodies and our minds and our hearts and our physical bodies, just clearing away anything that is not ours, anything that we no longer need to embody or carry to bring in waves of forgiveness, clearing any old patterns that we are ready to release, coming into that beautiful sustained note that is each of our authentic wise beings, the light of the divine that shines brightly as you. So take another deep breath in allowing the beauty of this moment and the joy the angels have for you to come flowing through for you. And so you go ahead and get cozy and we're going to move into story time. So this is an episode that I have promised to bring to you. So a while back, we did part one of a 1978 TV guide episode with Mary Tyler Moore on the cover. And we only got through Monday because apparently I had a lot to say about a lot of commentary about this TV guide. And it's so good. It's, it's so chocked full of memories for me and perhaps for you too. Now I know we have an international audience. So for those of you who did not grow up with U.S. television of the 70s, I'll still do my best to make this amusing for you. So we're going to start with Tuesday morning, and let's see what's airing. So, so to set the stage about where I am in life, because that is going to color my memories, I am 16 years old. I am very much in my circle of friends and I am absolutely in my eye rolling face like I know best I know everything adults are dumb I'm smart enough to make all my own decisions and friends are everything <laughs> that's the phase of life I'm in which may color um, my commentary here so 
we definitely start off early morning with things I would not care anything about. And if I wasn't in school, which I was, because this is September 26th, 1978. Well, I should say school would have been in session, but I have shared with you before that I hated school. I mean, I understand now knowing how I function in terms of my emotional bandwidth and my sensitivity to things, but I found it very difficult to go to school. And so more often than not, I would say I had a stomach ache and have my mom call me out sick. So I may or may not have been in school on this day. My poor mom. She never, she was so embarrassed. She was like, oh, Laurel, you're fine. Go to school. And I'm like, no, I'm really sick. And God bless my mom. She, she just would then just call me out sick. So who knows? Who knows if I was in school on this day or not, but school would have been in session. If I was home, I would probably sleep in, but I did know all of the talk shows because more often than not that's what I would be watching whether it was Phil Donahue or Mike Douglas I don't know if Dinah Shore is still airing at this point I might be watching some old reruns I'm noticing there is a rerun of Partridge Family I don't know that I would have watched it at 16 but I definitely had mad love for the Partridge Family at some point in my life and in this episode, Ray Bolger guest stars as Shirley's ubulant, 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 <laughs> sorry, father. Okay, so Ray Bolger stars as Shirley's father. For Mike Douglas, it's from Las Vegas. Co-host John Davidson is joined by Robert Goulet, Barbara Eden, and Foster Brooks. Ryan's Hope is on. I don't know if I'm watching Ryan's Hope at 16 years old. I, it was the first soap I ever started watching. I don't know that I'm interested at this point. On Dinah Shore, we have Joey Bishop, psychologist Joyce Brothers, singer Mickey Gilly, actress Pat Klaus. There's an impressionist as well. So, great episode. Let's see what else we have. All right, and I'm going to just skip us on over to prime time. There's a phenomenal show that is on this night. It's Paper Chase. How many of you remember Paper Chase? It was a brilliant show. It was about law school. And the law professor was played by John Houseman. And at some point, CBS canceled the show and, and PBS picked it up. But at this point, it's still airing on CBS. So Ford's father, who is one of the students, I'm assuming, a successful lawyer visits campus to recruit for his firm and also to observe his son who begins to crack under the pressure. Also a show that I've never heard, well, I may have heard of it, but I don't remember, Grandpa Goes to Washington, which stars Jack Albertson. So that might have been good. And Happy Days. Okay, so for sure I'm watching Happy Days, which was a force of nature back then. And in this episode, Fonzie, played brilliantly by Henry Winkler, receives a bump on the head and loses his sight. Okay, what's scary is I think I remember this episode. And Tuesday nights belong to ABC. So what came after Happy Days? Everyone? Theme song, please? Shlemiel, Shlemazel. Hot Some Pepper Incorporated, or whatever it was called, Laverne and Shirley. So out for kicks, Laverne, Penny Marshall, hooks up with a tough guy, but gets more than she bargained for when the thug pulls a robbery. Sounds good. And then that is followed by Three's Company. So come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. And Chrissy, Suzanne Summers, is still on the show at this point. So Chrissy hires out to type manuscripts. And her first assignment is a provocative diary that Roper mistakes for her own revealing memoirs. 
I'm sure that was very funny, but not really funny. You know what I mean? (laughs) And then that was followed by Taxi. I mean, I watched the whole block. Happy Days to Laverne and Shirley to Three's Company to Taxi. So in this episode of Taxi, a puzzled Alex, played by Judd Hirsch, finds himself attracted to an overweight and abrasive blind date. It'd be interesting to go back and watch that again and see how heavy the actress is. Again, I seem to remember that episode. It it was a brilliant show, and uh, I would love to go back and watch it. Also, what was followed by that was Starsky and Hutch, again, watching the whole ABC block. In this episode, Starsky, played by Paul Michael Glazer, is overwhelmed with guilt because a young woman is accidentally blinded during a shootout. Well, so, wow, so so there t- there's two episodes that are talking about blindness on this particular Tuesday night. There's also an ad here for posters. Does anyone else remember when you would open a magazine and you could buy a poster of Farrah Fawcett or The Fonz? Poster shops, record shops, or buying them by mail was a big thing back then. We loved our posters. So these posters are 20 by 28 or larger. They're $2.50 each plus 50 cents shipping and handling. So you can choose from Andy Gibb, who was a total hottie back then, and Margaret, Battlestar Galactica, Cheryl Teagues, the Coneheads. <laughs> I want to know who picked a poster of the Coneheads to put on their bedroom wall. And for those of you who don't know, the Coneheads were characters on Saturday Night Live. You can also pick from the Dallas um, cheerleaders, so the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. And then it's so interesting. So they have Cheryl Ladd and Dolly Parton, but this is why it's interesting. Then they have Ms. Christy McNichol and Ms. Linda Carter and Ms. Suzanne Summers. So I don't know why they got the Ms. and other women did not. And there's no Misters. And you also can get a Scott Bayo Chachi poster. So I think that's 1978 in a nutshell, right? (laughs) Which poster would you have gotten? I wouldn't have gotten any of them. None of them are compelling to me, even at 16. I I don't remember how I felt about Andy Gibb back then. I know at some point I thought he was cute, but I don't ever think he was poster worthy. Okay, let's move on over to Wednesday morning. So our talk show circuit has a Mike Douglas, again, John Davidson, still co-hosting with Joan Rivers singer Jose Feliciano and actor Dirk Benedict, who I thought was very cute and was on Battlestar Galactica. I don't know. I I wasn't watching a lot of Battlestar Galactica, but I definitely thought Richard Hatch and Dirk Benedict were cute, but I don't know that I would have had a poster of them. You you know what's airing? An ABC after school special. Who remembers those? So if you didn't watch television in that era, again, remember, this is before cable, before 24-7 streaming, before Nickelodeon and Lifetime and all of these niche channels. ABC had this program called the ABC After School Special. And a few times a year, they would have a made-for-TV movie that would air in this slot that was especially for kids and teenagers that usually spoke to some societal issue, something that could start a conversation or teach or bring something into awareness. So in this one, it's called One of a Kind. Diane Baker stars in this powerful and sensitive drama about the love between a mother and her daughter, Lizzie is a very special child who desperately needs her mother's love and understanding, but mom has troubles of her own. What can Lizzie do to make her mother care? 
and I'm sure it was wonderful. All of their after school specials were great. Let's see what else I can find. All right, as we come on over to prime time for Wednesday, we've got the Jeffersons, which we watched um, airing on CBS. So needing a warehouse, George warms up to Tom's commune dwelling son, <laughs> who just inherited one from his grandfather. First of two parts. I mean, isn't it funny that just the synopsis makes me laugh? A commune dwelling son. I'm sure that was great. Then there is the Dick Clark variety show, which I would not have watched. So scheduled guests include Barry Manilow. Maybe I would have watched for him because everybody was so into Barry Manilow back then. And he sold out everywhere he went. You could not get a ticket for Barry Manilow. You had to know somebody to get a ticket to one of his concerts. So scheduled guests include Barry Manilow, Suzanne Summers, Natalie Cole, Melissa Gilbert, and stuntman Steve Baker. Barry performs Ready to Take a Chance Again and Copa Cabana. Okay, for all of you who are of my generation, is is a song running through your head right now? At the Copa, Copa Cabana, the hottest spot north of Havana, or something like that. Music and passion are always in fashion, I think, at the Copa. I might be wrong. It's been a long time. So, I don't know that I would have watched that. Again, maybe for Barry. Also airing is Eight is Enough. This would have been tough. Because you could only pick one back then. Jefferson's? Dick Clark or Eight is Enough. Because I definitely watched Eight is Enough. So in this episode, Abby, played by Betty Buckley, gets pressured to share her pampered MG. Oh, that's a car. Wes used to have an MG. And Joni, Lori Walters, gets her break. She's hired by a repertoire company for stagehand work. Now, a little bit of Betty Buckley trivia. I believe, I believe, I might be wrong about this and I'm not going to Google it, but I believe she originated the famous role in Cats with the song Memories. Remember? I'm not going to sing it for you. Somehow she's affiliated with Cats, I think, before this role. I don't know. I may have it all jumbled up in my timeline. But somehow she was affiliated with Cats in the song Memories. Not the Barbara Streisand Memories the cat's memories. And I'm not going to sing either one of them for you. So if you need to Google it, I understand. So at 830, there is a, a sitcom I don't recall at all called In the Beginning with McLean Stevenson. And he is playing a priest, Father Cleary. He has an unholy fit when he's passed over for Monsignor. Now, McLean Stevenson famously left MASH at the height of MASH. He played Colonel Henry Blake. And he never found his footing after that. He had, I think, a couple of different sitcoms that never really took off. So this must have been one of them. Also, there is a Merv Griffin episode with Orson Welles and Joey Travolta, who is John Travolta's brother. Later in the evening, Three Days of the Condor is airing, which is a movie with Robert Redford, Faye Dunaway, Cliff Robertson, and Max von Sydow. Sydow. I, I don't know why I think there's an N in there. My dad would have wanted to watch that for sure. And if if we kids did not allow, allow him, because we, of course, ruled the roost when it came to television, to watch it upstairs, he for sure would have gone down to the basement to watch it. That's what kind of, like, he was such a good guy. He, he just didn't want to put up a fight. You know, he could have said, hey, I'm the dad. 
I paid for this TV. I'm going to watch what I want, which would they, my father would have never in a gajillion years done. He'd just go downstairs and watch. He was like, he's a good guy. My dad, Jack. You'd love him. Hi, Dad in heaven. <laughs> I'm sorry if I didn't let you watch Three Days of the Condor upstairs where you would have been comfortable. As I've already confessed to, I was in my eye-rolling 16-year-old um, phase. And so I apologize for that whole era of my life. Just a whole blanket apology. I'm so sorry. And I would imagine my father had a fight on his hand because Charlie's Angels was on. Although I was not necessarily a fan of Charlie's Angels once Farrah Fawcett left. And this is one with uh, with Cheryl Ladd. It was okay. I just, it wasn't necessarily, I had to watch Charlie's Angels. And then also airing is Vegas with Robert Urich, who is very handsome. And I think we watched this show. I think my mom liked him. And this one is expecting a shakedown. A politician asks Dan, played by Robert Urich, to find three elegant women who lured him into a hotel with promises of pleasure, but actually had plans for a body photo session. So Roth is played by Tony Curtis. Also in this episode is Troy Donahue and John Carradine. Shelley Fabre. Wow, like there's a lot of big names in this. Interesting. Okay, well, well, let's move on. Let's move on to Thursday, shall we? All right. On Thursday, Mike Douglas. Again, John Davidson co-hosting. Anthony Newley is a guest. The Reverend Billy Graham, who I would have cared absolutely nothing about. And comedian Gallagher. How many of you remember Gallagher? And he was known for smashing the watermelon with a mallet and getting it all over everybody. I'm sure he did other things, but that's what I remember about him. And then, you know, just to kind of get you in the groove, if you are home during the day, like I might have been, again, calling out sick at some point, here's what you have in syndication. Okay, so look at all the families. You've got Partridge Family. You can choose from Partridge Family with David Cassidy. You can choose from Adam's Family. Yes, with Morticia and Gomez and Uncle Fester. Or All in the Family with Archie and Edith Bunker. So you could choose which family you wanted to engage in. That's pretty cool, huh? I don't know. These things are just amusing me right now. Oh, Dinah is still on the air. So Dinah has Jacqueline Smith, Michelle Phillips, John Forsythe, and Hollywood columnist Army Archard. That would have been a good one. Yeah, I, that would have been a really good episode. And I know my cousin Susie would have liked it because of Michelle Phillips. So shout out to my cousin Susie. Michelle Phillips is going to be on Dinah. We can time travel back to 1978 and watch it together. And for those with small kids, there is Romper Room, which, as I have shared before, I have a grudge with Romper Room because when whoever the teacher was would look through the magic mirror, she would never see Laurel <laughs> through the magic of television. You also can watch Love American Style, truer than the red, white, and blue. And sorry if that's now going to go through your head. And Ryan's Hope, again, may or may not have been watching it at that point. More Partridge Family, Gilligan's Island. Okay, I'm not even going to read. I'm not, got my hands are over my eyes. I'm not even going to read the description. In this episode, they have a chance to get off the island and Gilligan screws it up. So, right, that's every episode of Gilligan's Island. All right, so we're now on to Thursday night. And, and this must have been a little bit of a conundrum because we had Waltons, which we did watch, and which would have been a good show to watch with my parents, versus Mork and Mindy, 
which you had to watch Mork and Mindy, Robin Williams. I mean, come on. He was a breakout star and he was all we were talking about back then. So for the Waltons, Jim Bobs, I don't know, I can't say that this, I've just recorded this twice. Let's try it again. One more time. Give you some insight to behind the scenes of recording a podcast. Jim Bobs got it right that time. Jim Bobs infatuation with the Baldwin sisters house guests upsets some of the mountain. The girl was in a convent and is trying to decide whether to return. Ooh, that sounds very star-crossed. So you could watch that. Some show I've never heard of called Project UFO, which seems like it is a drama of some kind. Or, of course, Mork and Mindy. Mork decides to move out of Mindy's apartment when he feels he is infringing on her social life. Well, that must have been a very special episode of Mork and Mindy. Do you remember when they would tease something on the very special episode of Blossom? Although Blossom wasn't airing at that point, but you know, a very special episode of the Waltons. Jim Pop. You know, so a very special episode of Mark and Mindy. And then there was What's Happening, which I never really liked very much, but you sort of had to watch something to bridge between Mark and Mindy and what came after that. So in this episode of What's Happening, the guys try to light up Shirley's life by introducing her to a friend of Roger's father. So also airing is Merv Griffin. Guests hosts Dick Van Patten with his wife, Patty, Florence Henderson, Jack Carter, and actor Adam Rich. And Adam Rich played the youngest son on Eight is Enough. I love that. I know that. Airing at nine o'clock, you can choose from Hawaii Five-0, which I never watched. Quincy, which we enjoyed. So in this episode of Quincy, Jack Klugman suspects murder when a magician's protege drowns during a fairly routine underwater escape trick. And Donna Michi's in this. This would have been pre-Cocoon. I mean, Donna Michi did many things, but he sort of had a resurgence after Cocoon. Also airing is Barney Miller, which we did watch. So while breaking up an illegal dogfight, Wojo, played by Max Gale, is bitten by a possibly rabid German Shepherd. And I'm sure there were jokes about Wojo foaming at the mouth. I'm sure that that was a a gag that had to have happened in that episode, yes? Okay, and you know what's airing at 9.30, which I would have been very excited about, is Soap. Brilliant. I think it was two years ago, Wes and I rewatched the whole show. I think it was on Tubi or something, one of those free streaming services that has commercials. So at this point in the story cycle of Soap, Chester, played by Robert Mandan, and his cellmate, oh, so, so Chester's in prison, take refuge in the Tate's basement after escaping from prison, and Dutch was his cellmate who falls in love with their daughter. That was a whole, whole story arc. Then at 10 o'clock, you can choose from Barnaby Jones, which I know we liked. My dad liked Barnaby Jones. A ruthless salesman for a clothing manufacturer does away with a buyer who's about to blow the whistle on his corrupt business practices. Morgan Fairchild is in this episode. Or you can choose from family. I loved family. I don't know how many of you remember this. It was with Seda Thompson and Christy McNichol, who I loved, and Quinn Cummings was in it. So fearful of losing her boyfriend to another girl, Buddy is slowly slowly bending to his desire that they spend the night together. And I think her boyfriend was played by Leif Garrett. Okay, I would have watched that for sure. And you know what's so interesting? On Sunday, this past Sunday, it was early in the morning, 
and I was flipping through TV stations and one of the TV stations was airing an old episode of Family. I got so excited. I hadn't seen that probably since 1978. And I was trying to explain to Wes the genius of this show. And so I have set up my TiVo and yes, I still have a TiVo. Does anybody else still use a TiVo? To record a couple upcoming episodes of Family because I just wanted to sort of dive into it again. And one thing that I totally forgot is Meredith Baxter played their oldest daughter. A really beautifully done show. So, and James Broderick was in it, who was and is Matthew Broderick's father. Anyways. I don't know why that's interesting. It is just interesting to me. So I would have I would have probably for sure been watching Family because of Christy McNichol. Leif Garrett was on it. And and I loved them. Not Leif Garrett so much. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with him. I'm just saying. I wanted I wanted my best friends to be Christy McNichol and or Valerie Bertinelli. They were sort of the female actresses who were contemporaries of mine age-wise, who I wanted to be friends with. Okay, so we're flipping now to Friday morning. And I just have to read this Partridge Family episode to see if anybody else just finds this delightful. So Maury Amsterdam is on this as a joke-producing hack writer. Now... To all of you, this might not mean anything, but again, I know my cousin Susie is giggling over this hall. Right? It's more Amsterdam. You have to watch it. He played Buddy on Dick Van Dyke's show. But he was he was the era, right? Maury Amsterdam. So, anyways, I don't know why that just made me laugh inside a little bit. Mike Douglas has Telly Zavallis and Rich Little, who did some sort of imitation of something and somebody and Victor Borgia and the rock group The Babies I have no commentary on that okay so we'll keep going (laughs) Gilligan's Island okay in this episode they have a way of getting off the island and Gilligan messes it up just every episode and can I can I tell that joke twice in one episode Well, I did, so there you go, and maybe you're asleep and you don't know that I'm using the same material twice in an episode. So, on Friday, it's interesting, I don't know what I would have been watching. Wonder Woman is on. So Wonder Woman, of course, played by Linda Carter, teams up with a police inspector to go gunning after car thieves who specialize in classic and custom sports cars. And also Lyle Wagner is on this. As I've shared with you before, we watch Superhero Saturday or Sundays. It's on one of the channels, and they have the old classic Superman, they have Batman, and they have Wonder Woman. And Wes loves those shows, so those do play in our home. I I really don't care, so I don't watch them. That's when I'm watching all of my TikToks about cats and way too many coffee ads and stuff like that. Oh, what I would have been watching is Donnie and Marie. Remember how they had ice skaters on Donnie and Marie? And on this episode, the guests are Jacqueline Smith, Rita Coolidge, Dirk Benedict, and Paul Lind. So that's Dirk Benedict on two shows this week. He must have been promoting Battlestar Galactica. All right, there's something called Who's Watching the Kids? I don't know anybody in it. So I'm not even going to talk about it. Okay, so on Merv Griffin, the guest host is Joey Bishop with Rose Marie. So you've got Maury Amsterdam on the Partridge family, and then Rose Marie is on Merv Griffin. It's a whole Dick Van Dyke thing. At 9 o'clock, you've got The Incredible Hulk or The Rockford Files. Guaranteed well, I think guaranteed Rockford Files would have won. Both of my parents liked it, and it was good. I liked it too. 
So in this episode, Rita Moreno, who is brilliant in everything she does, reprises her role as a streetwalker. <laughs> Why does every woman have to be a hooker or a streetwalker back in the late 70s? You know, Rita Moreno reprises her role as an astrophysicist. Like, you'd never read that. So, so, anyways, the hooker with a heart of gold was very much an avatar back then, an archetype like Starsky and Hutch, Beretta. Anyways, that was back then. That was, that was back then, my friends. And then another show called Flying High about three stewardesses, all very beautiful. It doesn't actually say that. That is just my commentary. Again, we were getting really difficult messaging as young women in this era. The adventures of three stewardesses begin with Pam, Marcy, and Lisa on a flight with a cockpit crew hit by food poisoning, and I guarantee you every single pilot was a man back then. Okay, so so just go back for, for like the antidote to this and re-listen to the episode before this one, which is about Dr. Sarah Hackett Stevenson, who was a trailblazer for women in medicine and women's wellness. Like, you know, let's, let's have a show about her, please. That would be awesome. And let's see what else we have. Okay. I can tell you what, um, my mom would have wanted to watch and I don't think she would have won Los Angeles Philharmonic at the Hollywood Bowl with Subin Mehta conducting violinist Itzhak Perlman. This has my mom and dad written all over it. And their only hope of watching is that it's Friday night. I would not have been sick at that point because, you know, I had life to live and I would have been out with my friends. And so would my brother. I don't know what my sister would have been doing. And my parents could have watched something they would have really enjoyed. So if we did not let them watch it, mom and dad, I apologize Hopefully you can listen to Itzhak Perlman all you want in the heavenly realm. Later on Friday nights, they also would have the Midnight Special, which I didn't really watch. But if you're interested, they have Dolly Parton, Alice Cooper, Yvonne Elliman, Frankie Valli, Paul McCartney and Wings, Rita Coolidge, Crystal Gale and Chuck Mangione. Also a salute to Queen. So, you know, it's interesting. So the ad for it says it's hosted by Dolly Parton. And this is the billing with guests. Rita Coolidge. Paul McCartney and Wings. And Queen. Like how, I mean, how do you decide between giving top billing between Paul McCartney and Wings and Queen but Rita Coolidge, who I think is wonderful, but I'm just saying, isn't it interesting that the way that they have the names listed? And Dolly is going to sing Jolene. Amazing song. Here You Come Again. Which I haven't thought of in years, but is now playing through my head. And If I Can't Have You, Yvonne Elliman from the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. And Frankie is going to be singing Grease. Okay. All right. I get it. Those songs were all very big back then. So as I have already shared with you, on the cover of this TV guide is Mary Tyler Moore. And so there's a big article about MTM, which was her production company that instead of having the lion in the circle like MGM did, they had the kitty cat. So apparently there was a kerfuffle at MTM and there was a shakeup. And I'm not going to read the whole article. But something happened worthy of being written about. Also indicative of this era 
there is an ad for free career booklets. You know, because maybe you didn't know what you wanted to be when you grew up. And so your options are bookkeeping, auto mechanics, interior decorating, engineering, surveying and mapping, TV repair, air conditioning, carpenter builder, motel restaurant management. If you've ever said there must be a better way to earn a living, career training may be the answer. Find out what it can do for you with no obligation to buy anything now or ever. Just check the field of your choice for a free career booklet and we'll also send you a free demonstration lesson that lets you see for yourself how you can take advantage of career training right in your own home in your spare time. I wonder how many people took advantage of that. So you would rip this out of the magazine and tape the outside edges and then mail it. What could be easier? Okay, here's an interesting ad from Sears. It is for an adding machine, a digital adding machine. So again, these were relatively new. A calculator, an adding machine. So this is a digital display plus tape printout. And it's $25 off. So the Sears desk calculator, add, subtract, multiply, or divide. And you can see your figures in 12 digit display. It's on tape too, with negative numbers printed in red. So it's now only $99.99, which was a lot of money back then. But also this was a phenomenal technology for the era at Sears. How many of you as kids remember playing with adding machines? My grandmother had an old one with the punch keys and then you'd pull down the lever and we loved playing with it. All right, we have the TV guide, crossword puzzle. And I don't know how many of these things I'm going to, I'm going to know. I mean, I usually do pretty good with the TV guide, but I, I don't think I know any of these. Let's see. I, I don't know. I'm looking. She's Sinatra's daughter. So that was Nancy Sinatra, right? So Sherman Hemsley's role, his initials, so that would be George Jefferson, GJ. Jamie Summers has a bionic one. Did she have a bionic arm? Or a leg. I think she had an arm. Okay, well, this is not nearly... Oh, here's one. <laughs> Beatty or Sparks? It must be Ned. Or Warren. Warren Beatty, Warren Sparks, Ned Sparks. How many letters is it? Hold on. I'll tell... Oh, it's three. It has to be Ned then. Okay. Oh, show starring Bonnie Franklin. Five words. One day at a time. You know, getting these things right makes me feel really smart, even though it has nothing to do with intelligence. But I remember that Bonnie Franklin played the mother in One Day at a Time, which also starred my, I wish she would be my friend, Valerie Bertinelli. Okay, we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> so then there's just some summarizing of some of the news. So Rock Hudson will be richer by an estimated $750,000 for his work in NBC's The Martian Chronicles, a six-hour miniseries based upon Ray Bradbury's book. The $7 million production will be shot in London and on the island of Malta. I have no recollection of that. There is going to be a Star Wars holiday special featuring Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, R2-D2, and James Earl Jones as the voice of Darth Vader. And speaking of James Earl Jones, Wes and I just 
watched the last hour of Field of Dreams, and he's so good in that. So, oh, the guest, what are these people doing on the Star Wars special? Because then it goes on to say the guest list includes Beatrice Arthur, so B. Arthur, Art Carney, Diane Carroll, the Jefferson Starship, and Harvey Korman. What do any of those people have to do, <laughs> do with Star Wars? Okay, I can't even imagine what that holiday special was like. Wow. Well, okay, there you go. And and then on the inside back cover, there is an ad for Control Top Legs Pantyhose. Legs, the pantyhose that came in an egg shape. It was an egg, a plastic egg, like a big egg that would be like the plastic egg you might get Easter candy in, but this had pantyhose. And then you had the egg and you didn't know what to do with it once you took the pantyhose out. And these are control top pantyhose, which is what we used before we had Spanx. And can I just tell you how much I loathed wearing pantyhose? Hated them. Hated them. Hated them. But back in the day, you had to have a lot of different pairs and then one would run and you would try to stop the run with clear nail polish. And if you tried to do the clear nail polish while you were wearing the pantyhose, they would stick to your leg. Does anybody else remember trying to pry the pantyhose off of your leg that had been shellacked on there with clear nail polish because you were somewhere out and you, you know, you weren't going to go buy a new pair of pantyhose. Pantyhose were a whole racket. That could probably be a whole episode of the trauma of pantyhose. Brought to you by Laurel Bleed and Maffei. Okay, my friends. Well, this brings us to the end of this issue of TV Guide and this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings. So I send you so much love. I wish you the sweetest of dreams. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. So I love you and thank you.